Welcome back. Since 2014, the American Dream School has been a charter school lake located in the South Bronx, providing dual language, project-based learning in a culturally responsive environment. Joining us now to share more and invite you to a panel discussion to learn more about ADS and their work in the community throughout the pandemic is Melissa Melkonian, founder of the American Dream School. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course. So first, for those who are not familiar, can you just tell us a little bit about the American Dream School and your school's mission? Absolutely. So in 2014, I founded the American Dream School, which uh, originally was a dual language charter middle school in the South Bronx, in the Mott Haven section of the Bronx. And the school's mission was to educate primarily the uh, immigrant population to be able to teach students in two languages. A lot of the students in the South Bronx are either immigrants or children of immigrants. And there were a lot of language barriers um, seen in regards to academic performance. And so the school was founded with the idea that students who are from uh, immigrant families come to us with a wealth of knowledge. They just come to it, us with that knowledge in a different language. And so for us, it's an asset. Uh, for our program because these are not empty vessels. These are actually very uh, knowledgeable students who want to thrive just like any other student. Um, and so we took that and we created a school, designed a school where we take the language and just help students develop their uh, English language skills by supporting the expansion of their Spanish language skills. And so a lot of the work that we do at American Dream involves project-based learning, as you mentioned, which helps students navigate uh, their language development. Um, we are very proud to say that we have since grown from only a sixth grade class through a six through 12 class. This is the first year that we have our graduating seniors. Um, and it's, it's a big year, right? It's a, our triple first, as we call them. They're first to graduate American Dream, first generation Americans, and first in their families to go to college. Wow, that is amazing. Thank you for sharing, Melissa, and congratulations to all the first graduates. Yes, uh, thank you. School. That's amazing. And Melissa, um, how has your personal experience shaped your decision to open this school? You have a story to tell as well. I do have a story. Uh, so I am the daughter of once undocumented Mexican immigrants. The, my parents are from Mexico. They moved to Texas. I grew up in the border town of El Paso and Ciudad Juarez. And so growing up, I was an English language learner as well. And English was me was English for me was actually a very difficult thing to grasp. It was uh, not until around fifth grade where I started to actually learn English, all of my classes were in Spanish and just trying to navigate the complexities of language development was very difficult for me. And so thinking back uh, with my own personal experience of just learning the language, but also in addition to that, like thinking about how my own parents interacted with school, mm. with my school, like they would not attend my parent teacher conferences. They, they were almost not a part of that educational uh, experience for me. Okay. And so when designing a school, that was not their fault. I, I was very well aware that that's not their fault. It was, I more saw that as something that I wanted to do differently at American Dream and make sure that as we design the school, it's something where families are welcomed, right? We welcome our families. We speak Spanish to our families. We welcome them with open arms. We provide services for them. Um, we're not just there for the students, but we're also there for our families. And it's really, really important for me that the entire American Dream experience, experience is felt by everybody because it's, it's triangulated. We have the parents, we have the teachers, we have our students. And if there's one of those pieces that's missing, we're not going to be very successful. So that was also part of uh, just taking a little bit of my experience and shaping that into what is. That. Thank you for sharing. And why was it important that ADS be in the South Bronx in particular, Melissa? Why was that important? So I, I've been in education now for 17 years and the South Bronx spoke out to me because it is the poorest congressional district in the United States. And it's also the lowest performing district when we look at it academically. Um, narrowing down to the South Bronx, uh, I did some research and I found that the South Bronx had a really high dropout rate of 
students of, uh, you know, first generation American students born to immigrant families who are dropping out of high school um, for various reasons. Uh, we also have a lot of Spanish isolated homes in the South Bronx, which means that there are families who don't speak any English. Uh, about 80% of those uh, families in the South Bronx are Spanish isolated households. And there just seem to be so many barriers and clear explanations as to why students are not performing academically. And for me, um, I saw that as an opportunity to be able to, to break down those barriers, uh, beginning with the language. The language should not be a barrier at all because as I mentioned earlier, it's an asset. And so I wanted to almost prove that students who are bilingual and bicultural are actually more than capable of, of achieving everything that is put out for them. They just need that opportunity. That is absolutely true. And I'm glad that you mentioned that, you know, bilingualism opens so many doors for our kids, especially here in the Bronx to empower themselves and also obtain greater careers after school. So that is a wonderful, you know, idea and a wonderful initiative that you have there in the school. Um, I'm curious to learn with tech inequities and the digital divide affecting so many students, Melissa, in our borough, how has ADS managed through remote learning during the pandemic? Have there been any challenges? Of course, there's been challenges. I think one of the things that we have going for us is that prior to the pandemic, our school was a one-to-one -one, uh, Chromebook school. So all of our students, even before the pandemic, were issued a Chromebook. And we had already, you know, seven years ago, we started uh, closing that digital inequity and digital divide or, or gap, right? Because I, there was like this forethought of like, we need to make sure our students are global citizens. And, you know, that includes technology. We need to make our students uh, be able to navigate uh, Google Classroom, um, turn in, type things online, be able to communicate with uh, and interact via email. So we've been doing a lot of this work from day one. And so when the pandemic hit for us, you know, we had a leg up in that our students had devices and had working knowledge of how to interact with those devices. The one thing that did impact us was the internet connection. So a lot of families did not have working Wi-Fi or internet connections. And for that, we were able to secure hotspots. Uh, we got a couple of grants where we purchased hotspots for families and delivered those. Um, and so we've we've assessed and reassessed and continue to assess our family situation to make sure that students are logging on. And if they're not, we kind of dig deeper to see what the, the issue is. If it's a broken computer, we'll replace it. If it's a internet, we'll give them a hotspot. So we've addressed all of those issues. Got it. Um, another issue facing the Bronx, and especially during the pandemic, but even before, is food insecurity. Um, Melissa, you will be a panelist at an upcoming event highlighting how ADS has served the community by feeding the hearts, minds, and stomachs of NYC's immigrants. Can you tell us more about um, this event and how the school has also contributed to the community in this way? Absolutely. So, you know, one of the, we have a couple of uh, sixth grade teachers on our our team here and through, it was a uh, Senor Zauder, he, he was interacting with students and he realized that there was food insecurity at home, right? So in communicating during the pandemic, he learned that a few of our students were, uh, had these food insecurities. And so through that initiative, he, or that, um, realization, he started an initiative. He started a, his own personal birthday fundraiser where he raised money to be able to purchase food for families. Uh, that was done in April. And then that just kind of snowballed into creating community bridges. So he and his colleague founded two community refrigerators that are right outside our school building, um, one on 141st Street and one on 139th Street where they are open 24 seven. Um, he's able to partner with local distributors who give food and they stock up the food with uh, plenty of, you know, um, milk, cheese, meats, fruits, vegetables, canned goods, uh, dried goods. And so he also occasionally will let the school know um, that there are food boxes being delivered. And so we'll set up outside of the school to distribute boxes of food for our own families because 
the pandemic has uh, has hit our population really hard. We have a lot of service industry families who have lost their jobs to, you know, in the in the restaurant business. Um, and so it's it has not been easy. And I think for our families, there's this gratitude towards a school because, as I mentioned earlier, we're just not we're not just a school for students. We're a school for everybody. I love how, you know, the teachers over at ADS go above and beyond for their families, you know, beyond the, the learning and also, you know, helping in the community. Um, before we go, Melissa, can you please invite our viewers to this panel event so that folks can join you here in the Bronx on that panel event with PIX11? Absolutely. So on March 3rd, we're going to have a panel event where we're going to have um, the New Yorkers, Jonathan Blitzer. We're going to have Tacombi, Susana Camarena. I will be a panelist and it's going to be moderated by Monica Morales uh, from PIX11, where we are going to discuss how the three of us in our organizations have um, fed our minds, stomachs, and hearts for our immigrant population. It is a panel that's going to be dynamic, informative, and educational. And I, I definitely invite you all to come out. It's, uh, it's bound to change your life and perspective. And it's going to be virtual, right? For anyone worried about- All that. virtual, all okay. via Zoom, free. Um, absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much, Melissa. Before we go as well, how can people stay in touch with ADS and also learn more about the school? Absolutely. So please uh, visit our website, www.theamericandreamschool.org. And you can interact with the website. There is a button under the news section where you can sign up for our monthly newsletters. Um, there are a couple of icons where you can volunteer to just stay in touch, um, do some volunteer work, um, or send me a direct email. But please visit our website, www.theamericandreamschool.org. Thank you so much, Melissa, for joining us today. Thank you so much. Of course. Melissa Melkonian is the founder of the American Dream School, a school located in the South Bronx. We'll be right back with OpenBXRX. <laughs> 